And according to this, I don't know what I'm talking about, which has been a constant theme throughout my life, because yes, number two is tricep kickbacks. Simon and hey, here. Thank you for joining me. As always, if there is something odd about my face today, you need to go and watch Raw Ups and Downs over on What Culture Wrestling, which I also recorded this morning, because it may be interacting with the green screen. I tried to wash it off, whatever it may be. Let's not worry about it and let's move forward. Because today, I read an article that's called The Best Tricep Exercises According to Science. And I was like, well, science, that's a pretty important thing in the world. And now they've applied it to tricep growth. And as we all know, the tricep, it's not the most important part of your arm. You want a good bicep, you want a good tricep. But the, the habit that a lot of people fall into is they think they just have to work their biceps to get a big arm. But we said this the other day, bicep two, tricep three. It's a little bit more complicated than that. But that's all you need to know. So if you want to have a massive t-shirt hugging arm, you got to work a lot of it. I don't know why I slapped it the whole time. The reason I found it so interesting is because it does come from the American Council on Exercise, ACE. So I'm going to presume they know what they're doing. And scientists at the University of Wisconsin measured the activity of the triceps brachii, drawing eight popular tricep exercises to determine which one was the best. I don't think I would have made this video until I actually got into the eight. I'm going to go through them eight to one, eight being the worst, quote unquote, one being the best, or the really eighth is the eighth best and vice versa. But when it got to number two, especially, I was like, no freaking way. But it just goes to show, even even though you can apply science to lifting weights and to training, ultimately you just got to do what works for you best. Some information in case you care as well, the ACE study was done using 15 participants. So again, you can straight away put your hand up and go, well, that doesn't feel like many people, uh, many people, which it's not. All of whom had had some strength training experience, so they're not newbies here. Uh, while this was not particularly a large cohort of subjects, I'm pleased they put that in there, the results may still help you choose which exercises to prioritize when lack of training time is an issue. This is kind of funny because it contradicts a video that I said a few weeks ago. Uh, so let's reveal the study. So in a number eight is the close grip bench press. Now, the reason I like the close grip bench press is because I'm a big fan of push pull legs. And it's just, if you're doing a push day, close grip bench press, cannot talk this morning, just sort of you know, it gets all of those movements you want and it puts them into one little pie because not only are you going to work your triceps, obviously, not only are you going to work your chest a little bit, but your shoulders are going to kick into deer. So I sometimes like to use it as a finisher. So I've done my chest, I've done my shoulders, I've done my triceps. And I'm like, right now, I just want to pulverize them before I leave the gym. So I do the close grip bench press. Now, there is a chart here. And if I was a smarter person, I could understand the chart. But essentially, what it's telling you is the force, I suppose. That's not the right word to use at all. But it's showing you how much you use the long head, how much you use the lateral head, and how much you do it combined. And when we get to number one, it's 100, 100, 100. Means when you are doing that exercise, you are using them basically perfectly, right? But we don't want to get into that in too much because well, if you're into the science, you can go check it out. But I don't think that's the reason we want to we want to get into this. And they talk about the close grip bench press. And they say, you know, don't put your arms too close together, which is what a lot of people assume. They think because it's close grip, I have to sort of go like this with my hands touching. Don't do that at all. Imagine where you would do your normal bench press. You only need to bring them in a little bit. Like I would say you want a, a grip that's just narrower, narrower than shoulder width. So there is still some force coming from your chest. But ultimately what you want to do is you just want to make sure when you're doing the range of motion that you're pushing with your triceps and you're not pushing with your chest. So sometimes it may actually be better to lessen the load and just focus on your form. And so you can teach your body, right, I know you're used to this position. We're doing bench press, but now I need you to switch up a bit. I need to use my triceps. So the reason this study said that it's so good for you though is because you can go heavier to really overload your triceps once you've got your form down. So yeah, it's good for simultaneously building muscle and for building strength, but it's only number eight. And I thought it would have been higher, but I suppose you are going to be utilizing other muscle groups. So maybe actually in terms of an all round exercise, it'd be better. But in terms of hitting your triceps, as we know, number eight. And number seven is the lying barbell triceps extension or how we all call it the flipping skull crusher. Now I tell you, before I read this article, I would have said that's my number one. That is my favorite tricep exercise. I get a great connection in my tricep and I feel like I can lift a lot of weight. And what a lot of people get wrong as well and I understand why they do this. And look, it may work for you. There is no right or wrong as long as you're being safe, but they actually lower the bar to their skull which makes perfect sense. It's called a skull crusher. Aim for your skull. But I find if you go, I'm not saying behind your head, but imagine I'm laying down right now. You want to be going there, right? So you almost get to the back of your head. So that's why it's, that's also your skull. And then you want to pull back up because if you get the position at the top, right, you will really start to flex your triceps. If you want to go to your front part of your forehead skull, you can, but I really do think once you get out of that habit and you master the other technique, you're going to see much better tricep growth. Some people say you get a better connection as well if you do dumbbell skull crushes, so you can try that too. And there's this argument, should you do it on a decline bench? Should you not do it on a decline bench? Try both. I really don't think there is a, you know, one size fits all with all of this. Try it on a decline. If you get a connection, great. Try it on a normal bench. You could even try incline. I wouldn't do it on an incline because I feel like you're putting your shoulders and other things in a bad position. But I was amazed that it's only number seven. And if we go back up to 
to that crazy chart, I mean, look, we don't have to completely understand the chart, but we can see that the close grip bench press was 62, 15.88, and this one is 62, 16.25. So it's not a massive jump, and it is nowhere near the 100 we get to at number one. Inner six is tricep push downs with a straight bar. Now, everybody does these because they just make sense. If you want to work your triceps and someone says, grab this bar, tuck your elbows in, and push your triceps down, not only can you see them in the mirror, which is going to give you an ego boost, but you're going to feel them. They give you a good pump. Everybody loves them. They also keep your triceps under constant sort of tension. But what a lot of people I feel do, and again, this may work for you, so don't take everything I say as red, is they lean forward too much. And when you do that, I feel like you bring your chest too much into it. So I'm not saying you want a perfectly straight back, but just find that angles between sort of leaning too far forward and going too far back. So you're not going to sort of, you know, put your back under any pressure. And once again, it's all about that mind muscle connection. I know we're talking a lot about that today, but it's so easy, especially when you get to the last few reps to try and bring in your shoulders and bring in your chest. And that's okay to a certain point, because as long as you're getting those reps out, you're still working muscle groups, which is the idea. But if you really want to isolate those triceps, I kind of feel like some people go in too quickly with their form on these because they just feel so common. Whereas if you take a second, lock in those elbows, fight the right the position on the bar, and then find the right position that you're standing, it's going to work better. But even then, it's only six. And five is the same again. It's a tricep push down with the rope handle. And this stands to reason too. We can kind of zoom right through this one. It's because with a straight bar, it's locked off. You can't do anything with it. Whereas when you've got ropes, when you get to the bottom, you can twist it out. You can flare it, whatever the right term would be. And you can actually flex your triceps a little bit more. And if you can hold that for a couple of seconds and then fight it back down on the negative... Well, I would have said you have a wonderful tricep exercise, but there's four better. Now, I like number four, which is overhead triceps extension. I love an overhead tricep extension. I love it if you do it with a dumbbell. I love it if you do it with a singular weight. I love it if you do it on the cable machine. There's about 62 different ways to do it. And I think the reason I like it so much is because in terms of that best but horrible pump that you get afterwards, when you're like, oh my God, it's killing me. I want to die. I would argue that maybe out of all exercises I do in the gym, this one may be number one. So instantly I'm going to be drawn to it because it feels like I'm working working out and never underestimate how important that can be not only for actual progress but for how good you feel so pick the one that works best for you my absolute favorite one is to do it on a cable machine because i just feel like not only can i lift a bit more but it feels a little bit safer you see a lot of people doing it with the dumbbell and then they get stuck and they don't know where to put the dumbbell but you can still do that maybe make sure you put a mat below you so you can just drop it or something like that but it did surprise me once again i thought it would be higher number three and number one i'm totally cool with but number two you've got to be kidding me and number three i also think you have to put an asterisk by because it is dips and again i advocate dips i think they're great but the ace study analyzed the effect of bench dips rather than regular parallel bar dips now i don't think you should be doing bench dips i think they put your shoulders under way too much pressure but you're gonna have to imagine that if bench dips are good for you parallel bar dips are good for you too so if you don't have a parallel bar it's in constant use which is a trouble in the gym yes sure do it on a bench but just make sure you're being clever and if you can do it on that bar run over and do it there just make sure you keep your body upright in order to maximize your triceps. If you're trying to work your chest more, you can do a little bit of a lean, but that's not worth talking about today. But again, mostly, as long as you're getting on there and you're taking your time with it and you're making sure you go all the way down and making sure you go all the way up so you can not lock out your muscles or your joints, I should say, because that's really bad for you. But I think what a lot of people do is they don't get that range of motion right. They don't go low enough and they don't go high enough. Again, there is going to be a, a passing point here that you don't want to go too crazy with because, again, you'll put yourself under, under duress that you don't need. But when you get to the top, you should be able to flex your triceps especially and your chest and feel it for a couple of seconds. And if you can't, it's because you're too low down and you've probably got this kind of crab look. Which brings us to number two dumbbell kickbacks. Now, I did a video like a month or so ago called exercises that are a waste of time. I'll caveat that with what I meant was you can do them, but if you're in a rush, I would go for other things. And according to this, I don't know what I'm talking about, which has been a constant theme throughout my life, because yes, number two is tricep kickbacks. Now, it even says here in the article that they use shoulder extension and elbow extension, and I still stand by the reason that half the movement doesn't even involve your triceps. However, this has been, you know, put through the scientific ringer. So what I have to imagine as I include myself in this is that we're just not doing it properly. However, I have tried doing this every single which way. And this is where I think the science versus what you enjoy argument comes into it. I can't get a pump with these. Uh, I never feel anything after I've done them. And I just feel like I'm putting a lot of pressure on my shoulders. So I just stop. Now, maybe I need to go back to the drawing board, but I feel like there's other exercises that I can do that I enjoy more and therefore I'm going to work harder on. So they're still gone for me. They also do mention to try 
try it on a cable machine rather than dumbbells. And maybe that's something I should do because then maybe you can actually control that range of motion more. Because obviously when you've got a dumbbell, gravity is going to be fighting you. And that's going to be less so with a cable because that kind of takes care of gravity for you. But there you go. So for everybody who went nuts to me going, no, I love doing dumbbell kickbacks. Science is in your corner. But I'm absolutely going to advocate and push for doing the cable version over the dumbbell version. And actually in my next tricep session, I'm going to try them because why the hell not? It's a cool thing about the gym. We can try new things and see what happens. And then number one is something that I have never done, apart from maybe when I'm warming up, the triangle push-up. Now again, this is the one that tested 100-100 when it comes to working your triceps. So it's pretty good. They're also known as diamond push-ups, as it mentions here. And I suppose, yes, the best thing about them is that you can do them at home. You can do them at the grocery store. You can do them whatever the hell you want. And nobody's going to stop you other than maybe the police if you start causing some havoc. Now, the interesting part is when I used to do these, I would have compared them to a close grip bench press. Because, of course, you take your hands, you make a diamond shape, you put them on the floor. And because your hands are so close together, you do engage your triceps. But apparently, when you put it through the scientific ringer, that's not the case at all. Because close grip bench press is number eight and this is number one. However, with that said, we don't know what weight the people were lifting on the close grip bench press whereas here obviously your load is going to be however much you weigh so if you're trying to be clever as we've already talked about and lessen your weight in order to focus on form you're not going to do that when it comes to the push-up version because it's just you i mean you could put a weight on your back but i don't think it's necessary so i wouldn't necessarily say that you should substitute this in for something you're already doing but going back to my finisher idea maybe after you've done the close grip bench press you could superset it with some of these and do not forget body exercises are amazing i take pull-ups into that as well normal push-ups we we do not do them enough because if you can master those and master your own body weight for lack of a better term when you get to isolation machines or compound exercises they do feel a little bit easier i'm only talking one two percent but these are amazing things you can throw in anywhere during your gym session like i say you can superset them you can use it as some kind of strange drop down i mean that would just be a superset but you know what i'm talking about just try and get in pull-ups and try and get in any kind of push-up that you can because i just think they are ex they're exercises that would actually serve you in the outside world and nine times out of ten if you can bring that into your training everything else just gets better so there you go the eight best tricep exercises according to science now if you don't believe in science that is cool and if you haven't tried any of these before maybe add them into your plan and see if they work for you but do not forget if they don't that's okay it was a study of 15 people not the billions that are living on earth now also please do like the video share the video and subscribe to the bell ding ding so that video is going live there will be another video on the screen please do give it a click otherwise grillermind.com forward slash sami you can to get 10 off all of these supplements i like them a lot in greg Doucette's power 13 cookbook if you want help with your diet patreon.com for the assignment of 316 for exclusive videos and all my reaction videos are there now because youtube announced the other day they're probably going to demonetize every single person's reactions videos so i'm never bringing them back especially because it's been absolutely crazy come follow me on instagram and twitter at simon of 316 on cameo simonlose.bigcartel.com for merch and otherwise yeah go out there have an amazing tricep session probably don't ever do a triceps day maybe do an arm day or a push day but hey man do whatever the hell you want see you soon